Hello, everyone. Hi. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, yes, so I'm monitoring Professor Dr. Asad Islam's session. Dr. Asad Islam is the director of the Center for Development Economics and Sustainability and professor of economics at Monash University in Australia. Dr. Islam has extensive experience working in the field to implement academic and policy relevant research in the areas of education, health, and program evaluation. Dr. Islam has conducted more than 20 randomized controlled trials in developing countries to understand the efficacy of various interventions, and his research work has been published widely in top economic journals. Um, now, let's put our hands together to welcome Dr. Islam. Over to you, Doctor. Thank you, Joe, and thank you, everyone. And in particular, thank you, Dr. Busha and uh, World Bank and um, uh, everybody uh, here. Uh, it's good to be here, and it's a great pleasure uh, to talk to you all. I hope, uh, again, I will see you all uh, in person at some point. Um, so uh, the point, uh, uh, the topic I'm going to talk is more about learning loss in the context of COVID, but it can be applied in the current context, like uh, the climate change issues that we were discussing in the last session, uh, and particularly the current floods that uh, Pakistan is experiencing. Um, so let me start with some um, motivation to try to uh, give you some a big picture about what happened um, uh, in terms of the learning loss due to school closures in developing countries in particular. So um, if we look at some numbers, South Asia as a whole uh, suffered more uh, in the developing countries um, in Asia. Uh, we had almost uh, uh, 375 days of school closures uh, between February 2020 to October 2021. Uh, and uh, in terms of um, uh, students, there were about 24 million pre-primary to tertiary school students who were uh, considered as dropped out in, from the school system. Uh, if you look at the world picture, um, it's, the number is huge. Uh, 200 million uh, students did not have any kind of remote learning opportunity. Uh, and uh, uh, 53 to 70 percent of the uh, students uh, suffered from learning poverty, it means that they are, cannot even read at the, by the time they, they reach to the uh, age level 10. Um, and if we look at the uh, numbers in terms of the loss of uh, GDP, by 2030, uh, um, these developing countries. Um, uh, and uh, the world as a whole we, is going to suffer more than 1% of GDP. Uh, this is the estimate um, came uh, from the Asian Development Bank. Uh, uh, and so this learning loss is likely to also cause a, a lot of um, uh, issues in developing countries, uh, particularly uh, if you look at the productivity issues, uh, the uh, developing Asia is going to suffer a loss. And in particular, those is workers who are low-skilled workers. Um, uh, those workers did not have the opportunity to work uh, from home because of the nature of the work that they do. Um, they had, uh, and, and their families suffered a lot. Uh, so the productivity issue is going to be important and the families and the children of the families are going to suffer. If we look at the Pakistan, uh, the estimates from uh, Asian Development Bank suggest that it's almost 1.5% of the GDP uh, lost by 2030 due to school closures in Pakistan. Okay. The numbers do vary a lot uh, across countries depending on the school systems, uh, but these numbers tell a, a, a lot of um, loss in terms of the productivity, the GDP growth, and other things that we are concerned with. Um, so, and if uh, we think about um, some numbers that is coming from uh, some assessment, like um, annual status of education report in Pakistan, 
um, uh, according to the report, uh, you know, only 74% of the grade eight students can read a story in their, in their own language. Okay? And 63% of grade eight Pakistani students can solve the simple arithmetic division problem. Uh, and uh, in uh, UNICEF or and UNESCO also came up uh, with similar numbers in terms of uh, the students in grade five in Punjab, the, uh, uh, when they compare the learning outcome be before COVID and the, up during this COVID, uh, they find that a significant decrease in learning loss. More recently, I mean, this is due to this current flood that Pakistan is experiencing, uh, the World Bank suggests that uh, about 24,000 schools have been damaged or destroyed. And 3.5 million children, uh, is, their schools are disrupted. And so, so the stimulus that are coming still is evolving, uh, as, uh, but it suggests that uh, the learning losses due to this uh, flood uh, could exceed the COVID-19 learning loss. And we saw the numbers that uh, are due to COVID-19. So we can see a huge loss. The, these students suffered did, during COVID, and now they are also experiencing the floods. Um, and the climate change has caused these issues. And then um, it's a double problem uh, for these students. Um, and ac uh, according to the uh, published paper uh, uh, in 2005, earthquake in Pakistan, they caused a huge learning loss, even after uh, offering the families of these um, students some financial compensation after the earthquake. So, immediate policy action in terms of the transfer, in terms of the other measures that we have been discussing. In the last session, uh, Hans Temer uh, mentioned, we actually uh, need to uh, come up with some measures. Otherwise, uh, the loss is going to be significantly more and it will prolong and it will have a long-term impact in terms of the productivity and growth of Pakistan economy. Okay. And so there is another dimension of this um, uh, learning loss. Um, when families face this economic problem um, due to either this health uh, crisis of the COVID or economic problem due to this climate change because a lot of families are out of work. So uh, the girls are more likely to suffer from this kind of problem. Uh, generally, uh, uh, speaking in the context of South Asia, it's not only in Pakistan, in many other parts of the South Asia, um, we, we observe that okay, girls face the more, uh, more constraint in terms of going to school. And when uh, families have some excuses in terms of the uh, income loss uh, shocks, uh, they actually uh, put uh, girls' children out of the school. Sometimes they actually um, uh, uh, force them to marry. So there are issues that are come also gender specific due to the climate change, due to the school and closures, and that we also need to also think about in terms of the yes. If we look at um, uh, the broader picture, so the loss of the uh, uh, learning are happening more among the students who are coming from lower socioeconomic or disadvantaged backgrounds. Um, uh, and I have some numbers from Bangladesh which suggest that the teenage girls, uh, especially, uh, you know, uh, who are 13, 14, 15, um, are actually uh, the ones who are not coming back to school um, after the school is open. Uh, so it seems that, uh, you know, the students who are younger, are the ones who support more and they need to be taken into consideration in our policy and programs. So, and the government in these countries, if in response to the, um, you know, law school closures, took some steps um, uh, by offering, uh, uh, you know, uh, some remote learning through online system or through um, television. 
But the problem is, if, if you look at the uh, numbers in South Asia, um, well, the uh, internet access was very low. And this is even lower among rural um, population. Uh, if you look at the uh, dot points that is extreme left, the South Asia has only less than 10% of the population with internet access. And so uh, the uh, uh, remote learning opportunities that were given through internet were not easily accessible for most of the South Asian uh, uh, people, particularly those coming from uh, rural background. And it, it, some families had um, television and uh, in Bangladesh, for example, the government offered lessons through uh, television, but uh, the, the lessons were not interactive and the children didn't feel, feel um, interested in um, uh, education through television. And uh, so we have some numbers through surveys which suggest that actually uh, less than even 10% uh, of the students who had access to the television actually access uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, you know, education through their television during the school closures. So what um, we see that a, a, a lot of um, loss due to uh, this um, high school closures, uh, but it, is, it doesn't apply only in the context of COVID because we now, you know, in Pakistan, we are now seeing that that is happening. And it's not uh, unique to the Pakistan in terms of the um, uh, flood in Bangladesh, uh, where we, uh, I come from, uh, we also see lots of uh, uh, climate change related issues, flood um, is happening and schools are getting closed. So we need to actually think about the system um, when schools are closed, children are able to learn. Uh, so outside of school, we also need to think uh, well, how, how we can actually manage best uh, the students. So in, in response to that, we developed um, two interventions um, and implemented in Bangladesh. And now we, we are in the process of implementing in Nepal and in Pakistan as well. Um, and I will talk about that actually. So what we did is, um, you know, in Bangladesh, as I uh, just mentioned that, you know, the remote learning opportunities, even though are provided, the people didn't have the TV and most areas didn't have access to the internet. As a result, the students uh, could not access it. So we offered them, uh, we hired um, uh, volunteers. Uh, these volunteers are basically the students from universities. They were also not able to go to university at the time because the university was closed. So we use the social media platform, Facebook and other platform to recruit some volunteers to help the children in rural area uh, over the phone. Uh, so we call telementory. And, uh, and the children in our case are the young children who are in, in early grades in primary schools. And the, so the, because the lessons were, were offered through phone, the, their parents need to be involved in this process because the children were too young. Okay. So we offered through an NGO in Bangladesh. In, uh, and so this, uh, uh, volunteers are all university students. And we randomly assigned them into different um, children and mothers. Uh, and we gave them the contact number of the mothers. So, and this NGO helped um, us to actually connect with the mothers uh, so that they know that who are calling them. Uh, and uh, we uh, provided a 13 weeks of uh, consecutive uh, learning on Eng in English and math uh, in uh, 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 in the time that is convenient for both mother and the uh, ch child uh, 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 during that time. Uh, and we also send them some text messages to uh, give them a lesson plan on what they can do at home uh, during the week. So usually the Volunteers are engaged once in a week, uh, half an hour time period 
calling them. Uh, so they, uh, there was no charge from the mothers. It was uh, the, our volunteers who actually called them uh, and, 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 and teach the students at their uh, usual time. Um, so we had a very structured session uh, to make sure the session is productive and we conveyed this information to mother and child as well to, uh, so that they also know what is coming up in their conversation. And we gave them a, a lesson plan for this third week. So every mother and child has a, a booklet that will actually tell them the week one plan versus weeks, uh, other weeks plan. And they know exactly what they are learning. And we focus on basically foundational skills, the skills that students at their age level, at their grade level, that they need to learn. No, rather than, you know, uh, just com completely copying their textbook because we, uh, schools are closed and we, we wanted uh, to make sure that they not, uh, learn the basic skills. So you can think, uh, and so this is a, a typical scenario where a mother, uh, she has a phone, and, and the you know the volunteers call their mother, and the phone is on the mic, uh, and 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 then uh, the volunteers is basically giving instruction to the child, and mother is helping whenever the, the child needs some kind of understanding or uh, uh, or talk to the uh, volunteers. So, and we did this during the. Um, uh, uh, first lockdown in Bangladesh, um, and this was done over a 30 weeks period. We had, after the intervention was completed, we also assessed the students. And then after a year, last year, we also went back to these students to try to understand how these students are doing, and we also assessed them a year later to uh, see the long-term effect. So we, and we looked at their um, different outcomes in terms of the learning outcome. We looked at their English, math, and you know, the Bengali and the general knowledge. And we also looked at the parents' um, involvement in terms of how much, uh, much time they are spending and the activities the parents are doing, and also the parental style. And so what we see is that, you know, the children who received our, the, this telephone uh, based, uh, you know, tutoring, you can think of, um, uh, the, uh, are uh, the ones who benefited about 30, their test scores are 35% more than the students who did not receive it. And remember, we did it randomly so that, uh, you know, the students who receive this uh, uh, offer are exactly similar to the students who did not receive. So, the, so there is no issue in terms of the concern that some people might raise that, okay, students who might benefit from the intervention are the ones who might have taken up this program. No. So the answer is, it was done through lottery and, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, and the lottery determined who received the intervention and who did not. And after a year, we still see that the gains in terms of the test scores are still there, 15 to 20% more um, uh, uh, in terms of the test score gain. And we also see uh, that the largest gains are coming from the English literacy, uh, which is the most difficult part for, uh, uh, for the students. And after a year, we still see that about one third of the gains still persist. When we look at the parental behavior uh, uh, or parental interaction, you we also see uh, that uh, you know in terms of the time spent and in terms of the activity that uh, parents are involved with the children, that also improves. You look at um, one month and ten month in terms of who benefited more. We see that children who are actually uh, lower uh, in terms of the ability. Um, are the ones who benefited more. If you, if you want to think about how, how, how I can actually compare these students, think about a student who will be 
in the 30th percentile in the distribution. Because of our intervention, the student would move to 60th percentile of the, uh, of the student's distribution. So if a student, so if, if there are, let's say, uh, uh, you know, 100 students, and a student uh, is on the 30th percentile, then a student will move to the 60th percentile uh, because of the intervention. Um, and if we look at the uh, effects, um, we see that the students who were, you know, in terms of the lower ability, uh, 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 the, the lower ability group are the ones who benefit more. We did not see much in terms of uh, gender. Um, and we do see at the end of the year, uh, one year, everybody actually benefited more through the intervention. So this uh, is, uh, intervention was very cheap, actually very um, cost effective. Uh, uh, it, it cost us less than, uh, you know, 0. 0.4, uh, um, less than $20 for each, uh, every student improvement in their test scores. And um, because the mobile phone uh, penetration in the rural area is almost universal, more than 95% of the um, families have rural phone, it was easier for us to deliver rather than you know, going through internet or going through television. Um, and so this can be applied in the context uh, like, you know, flood that is, we are experiencing in Pakistan, political unrest, because sometimes, I mean, I come from Bangladesh where, uh, you know, a lot of schools get closed when the um, uh, political unrest is there. Uh, I, I guess similar situation is, uh, uh, could be there in Pakistan as well. Uh, so, uh, and, and this can be adapted uh, in different situations when schools are closed. Um, we are, as I said, we are working in, in multiple countries in uh, South Asia and also currently in Indonesia to uh, actually try to um, uh, replicate this intervention in other settings to understand how it can be adapted and uh, how, how much it will benefit in, in those settings. So after doing this, we actually went back and um, thought about it. Actually, uh, we want to scale up. How do we scale up? And we, it seemed to us, scaling up is a more challenging this, uh, if, uh, for this kind of intervention because we relied on the volunteers. Um, so and the volunteers are university students. students. So they are kind of short in supply, right? So you, you don't have that many university students to uh, help the students uh, in the whole Bangladesh. And, you know, in our case, the typically student who would um, be volunteering are the ones who would do during their leisure time. And they, they, are, they are helping uh, one or two students uh, every week. Um, uh, so it was not, clear to us how we can actually scale up. So we um, thought um, we, uh, we developed um, a different intervention, but again, using simple basic form. Because um, again, our concern was mainly the students from the rural area who did not have access to you know, uh, the uh, formal education system or in internet or whose parents were not able to help them during the time they needed help. Uh, so, um, uh, and uh, the other co co uh, consideration that we had in uh, our, you know, telephone-based uh, tutoring program is, you know, you need to call to mother. Mother might be busy to look after family chores or other children, or, um, uh, you know, the phone might not be with mother, phone might be with dad. So uh, there, uh, and uh, they might not have a you know good time at family, and we are calling them at the time. So there are a lot of issues that we thought, and then we uh, thought rather than doing that, we uh, do the following. We call the uh, call the, uh, interactive voice response based um, uh, uh, tutoring. So what it is is nothing you can think about. 
your lecture is being recorded and put in a server and someone can call, just use the basic phone to access um, uh, to the re recorded uh, lecture. So, and so again, here we use the university student as a, um, uh, as a role model for the teachers. So they recorded uh, the lectures, but that's it. And then we, we put that re uh, recordings in a server and we gave the phone number of the server uh, to the parents. So the parents can call, it, it is a toll free number. So, uh, and because it's people in Bangladesh who are not used to the toll free number, what happened is that the parents just need to uh, give a missed call. Any, they, call, they can call anytime. Okay, they don't have to call any space. They, they just need to give a missed call and then there will be an automatic call going from the IVR system to the parents, asking them what they want to know or learn, what, what lessons they want to uh, uh, cover. And then they will have to press that some button and, and, and then uh, basically learn that uh, lesson. So again, we uh, offered them uh, uh, basic skills in terms of the foundation skills, literacy, numeracy, and we also, because the schools are closed, so we thought that we uh, gave, gave these students some kind of activities they can do at home to develop their some skills in terms of the behavioral issues. You know, a lot of parents uh, complain that, okay, the schools is closed, they are having problem with children. And so we thought that we give them uh, some, uh, um, uh, so this um, behavioral skills and also leadership skills and other uh, non-cognitive skills that they can actually try at home to develop their own, um, uh, own understanding. Uh, so again, so to summarize what these lessons are, this is a pre-recorded lecture. Uh, it's kind of more, uh, if you listen to the lecture, it, is, it was more interactive, the way it was recorded, as if they are uh, in a classroom um, and a conversation is happening between teachers and children, uh, students, and that's uh, the, the lessons are happening. So when the students are listening through phone, they would be thinking that, okay, they might be in a classroom, there are other friends in the classroom because there is some conversation happening and they are just listening. Um, and so again, we, uh, they could uh, learn any number of lessons. So we offer them um, a lot of lessons in different, and, uh, but this time a lot focusing on their textbook as well to uh, make sure that they are ready when their uh, schools are uh, open, open. Because uh, I mean, in South Asia, in many parts of the world, so parents are also concerned that, okay, uh, how my child is doing uh, in terms of the homework, uh, the math problem that they are. So, so we wanted to make sure they are able to solve this problem. So um, I don't know yet whether it will work. So uh, it, it's just very short video uh, how it, uh, we do, uh, did that. Let's try.
sorry, it's in Bengali, but hopefully the translation was okay. Um, uh, the point is to actually how we actually interacted. And so we gave them some, you see this child is doing some activities also. So uh, with mother um, in outside uh, curriculum uh, as well. So all these things um, are done uh, with, uh, uh, with the uh, people involved. And uh, this actually, uh, uh, this curriculum uh, developed by some leading experts in the field. I am an economist, so I'm not really an education person, but we had people in the team who are uh, expert in the curriculum development. Uh, and um, uh, it's well, uh, it's, it was tested and validated before COVID. And so we basically adapted it in, a, in, in the current context. Again, we offered them over 15 weeks period. Um, we tried to understand whether that actually improved their communication, leadership, and planning skills, their behavior, in addition to their, you know, the test scores that we really are concerned with. Yeah. Um, in, if you think about in terms of how they, whether the parents actually call this number, use this, actually most parents did use. Um, there were some parents who um, used one or more, but uh, uh, the 30 lesson that we offered them in is uh, uh, literacy, numeracy, and non-cognitive skills, most parents actually uh, uh, access this um, system because when you call them, the system automatically records how long you have been listening and who actually called them. So it is it was easier for us to track uh, actually um, the usage of the system. Um, and if uh, when we check the test scores, so uh, after 15 weeks, we see that 24% increase in their test scores uh, for the children who actually received the intervention. Again, we offered them through the lottery because we could not definitely offer to any everybody. In, but so we had to make judgment. And so the lottery seemed to be more fair uh, than uh, any selection uh, that we can uh, possibly do. We, we, uh, in terms of the uh, test scores in different subjects, literacy, numeracy, English, Bengali, and other things, we, we do see significant gain. So if you look at the, in terms of the other studies that are conducted, our uh, 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 gains in terms of the uh, test scores improvement are even higher than the similar kind of um, intervention conducted um, before COVID. And one of the reasons that we think is because the schools are closed and the students didn't have any access to alternative platform in terms of the learning. So anything that you gave actually is going to boost their education and learning opportunities a lot. So it, it probably increased significantly in the context of school closures, but you know now the schools are open. Um, we need to think about, calibrate it, actually how we can really adapt it. Uh, and we are um, now doing this currently. Currently, the project is now ongoing in um, Nepal and also in Bangladesh, we are doing among grade nine and 10 students. Um, they don't need help from their mothers uh, or parents so because they have their, they can, they are able to call themselves. So, uh, and uh, we, we say, um, uh, that uh, is actually um, students are taking up a lot. And uh, we are talking with Aga Khan University now. Um, hopefully we'll be able to start this uh, uh, program in Pakistan very soon. We currently are waiting for funding outcome. But if you look at the, in terms of the um, uh, cost, uh, it is very cost effective. We had almost only a dollar uh, to spend for for each uh, session for a student. And if, if, if you scale it up, so uh, because we did it, uh, um, and the fixed cost here is higher because the development of the content and the IVR, the material, the lecture, once you put that in the server, it's basically the fixed cost is done and then you just, the variable cost is just a cost for telephone. So because uh, for parents, it was free to call, so we, we covered the cost of the call 
And so the only thing that we uh, is, is the server uh, hosting cost and uh, and the calling cost. And it was really cost effective, uh, one dollar per week per student. Uh, 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 that was the, uh, done uh, in our context. So um, we are partnering with uh, ADB and World Bank and some local institutions in these uh, countries. And I also mentioned that we are uh, doing it in Indonesia. Um, so to summarize what we think uh, is that, um, you know, uh, in, in many situations that, or I mean, in the context of Pakistan, particularly now, you know, we now need to actually go back and uh, try to recover the learning loss for the children that experienced flood, that experienced the COVID-19 school closures, test them to determine how much loss that ha happened and prioritize their foundational skill and, uh, and also extend the learning time. And I offer this kind of catch up uh, 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 program outside the school system so that they are able to, uh, you know, because a lot of children are going to school, but they are not able to uh, 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 actually uh, follow what is happening in the school because this, they have been automatically promoted to their grade level, but uh, they did not learn that in the last two years. And also we need to offer some sort of training to teachers because our teachers are very, uh, um, uh, I'm not really adaptive. They need to be flexible. They need to consider the system that, okay, they uh, need to teach the foundational skills and so that they are um, students can quickly learn some basic things and move forward. So what we are uh, also doing now um, in Bangladesh, we are calling the catch up camp. Um, so, uh, and so instead of, you know, the, the one with telephone that we use the volunteers from university, now we are using the volunteers from the local community, from villages. From East Village, we are uh, picking volunteers and these volunteers are offering, again, through telephone, because some of the uh, children are located remotely and it's, it's difficult to go to the child house and uh, giving them instruction um, uh, is uh, actually uh, convenient. Um, uh, and some, in some cases, the, the, we do not have good uh, teachers, volunteers, in that is uh, villages, so the uh, teachers or volunteers who are uh, you know nearby villages can also deliver these lessons, but they can also go to the villages whenever the students uh, need it. And so, and we are also recruiting the students from classroom who are better uh, students in terms of their you know academic ability or senior students. They are helping the junior students uh, the, again the basic math and English, and uh, and 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 the, uh, the other thing that we are doing we are uh, call it in Bangladesh we call patshala. Uh, it's the kind of a outside school um, a camp we are setting up again the uh, volunteers uh, who are um, from these villages are actually tutoring in that patshala uh, free. For the students and they are coming uh, uh, in that parshala to actually learn things that they, they they are not learning in school because the schools are open but the school are not really tackling the problem in may, most uh, cases in Bangladesh. So we are helping the students to make sure that they are able to follow the materials at the school. Uh, yeah, uh, and finally we are also helping mothers to give some counseling in terms of the financial stress and difficulties that they are going through, you know, you know, cost of living pressure is high. The other concern is because of this rising food prices, you know, a lot of parents are feeling pressure uh, 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 and a lot of them are probably thinking about uh, children not going to school, but rather uh, do or some work. So we are giving them some counseling in terms of the financial stress and difficulties that they're going through and helping and, and, and giving them 
uh, instruction and their uh, understanding that how important it is for them to actually educate their children. Uh, the last slide uh, is actually we are um, uh, this kind of uh, approach through telephone, basic phone can be adapted in many contexts during COVID. We actually gave them a lot of help uh, through uh, different NGOs, including BRAC in Bangladesh, uh, uh, to support them in terms of their food security issues, uh, because a lot of families were not able to get a food. So we actually help them to say where they can get food and our people will offer them food. And we also um, uh, use their simple phone to give messages about COVID-19 health protocol, you know, the social distancing, hand washing and other messages that um, we heard, you know, when the COVID hit uh, us in the beginning and a lot of people were confused, we actually offered them. And in India, we um, there was a actually um, a lot of issues ha happening when the, you know, the public Jamaat people, um, uh, uh, actually, in Delhi, um, uh, they uh, congregated, and and apparently there was COVID at the same time, and there were people who are blaming these uh, people that the Muslims uh, have spread out the uh, COVID in India. So we actually uh, gave them information about actual where is is the COVID actually happening. Uh, in terms of the percentage of the COVID cases and in the states where um, uh, Muslims are uh, uh, have larger in number versus in uh, states where Hindus and other communities are there uh, to give them actually factual uh, 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 information so that they know exactly that, you know, it's not the religion or it's not the immigrant or it's not the other uh, communities, particular community that they should blame uh, for this kind of thing. So we uh, again through the phone and we found that actually this was really helpful. So the bottom line is um, our system is not really adaptive. Our government is not really responsive um, in many ways in terms of um, doing things very quickly. And so we need to mobilize our resources through NGOs, through other means to help the communities and there are ways to do that. And we found that, you know, through uh, NGOs, um, uh, especially in our uh, settings, a lot of uh, good NGOs are working and uh, you can actually help the communities during the disaster, floods, uh, or a health crisis uh, to help recover uh, in, a number of things. And it is not really uh, that much costly. You can use a low cost, low tech solution uh, 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 particularly the areas that are typically not served by the uh, way, uh, you know by the government or even by the community uh, that are uh, you know uh, uh, well in terms of the uh, income and other issues they are not really uh, that poor. So we have to think innovative way to find out the solution in the short term or over the long term we need a strategy policy in place so that we can tackle these issues um, and, and, and can help um, and mitigate the problem. Okay, I'll stop here. Thank you, Dr. Islam. It's very fascinating to learn how um, you upscale a random trial, random control trial into actually implementing the policies to solve real world problems. That's very inspiring. Um, I believe I'll pass it over to the stadium or to the auditorium. Um, Dr. Bushrai Yasmin, you may have some words to say or there may be questions from the audience. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zoe. Uh, this is Dr. Faiza here. We just have time for one quick question uh, because then we are uh, going to start the next session. Uh, we have question from Dr. Saira Tafel in the chat box also. 
uh, if Dr. Asad Islam can uh, also read a wonderful presentation indeed. It's a very inspiring success story. I was just wondering that how diverse were the attitude of recipient of this intervention and how much resistance the team faced in implementing this intervention. Secondly, how do they cater for the issue of mother's primary uh, care, uh, who are the primary caregiver illiteracy? Thank you. Yeah, and no, a very good question. Uh, initially, there was kind of hesitancy in terms of adopting the technology because you, the mother, need to call to someone, uh, or in the case of uh, IVR, uh, they are calling a system and they are not really used to. So what did our NGOs do is that they demonstrated to uh, mothers uh, how to use this. So once this initial um, um was over, it was really easy for us. Uh, and in fact, we are hearing uh, from those mothers actually that they want to uh, uh, ask to continue because the children, uh, they think that actually um, are not um, uh, coping in the school system uh, that much. Uh, and in terms of the illiteracy, so there is illiteracy in terms of, uh, you know, technology. But there is, I mean, in Bangladesh now, most mothers have primary education. Well, uh, Bangladesh has a successful case in terms of the women education. Um, we all probably know, because uh, in the 90s and, um, and early 2000s, the education was offered free for all uh, women and girls. And, uh, uh, and uh, all of them, uh, more than 90% um, uh, girls attended these schools, and if you look at the numbers, um, you will see that you know the girl students uh, are higher in number in the schools than boys. Uh, in fact, you know, the government now adopted uh, a system where which was available for girls. So, in order to encourage also boys to come to school and learn, uh, the uh, school system is uh, uh, is giving a scholarship for the both boys and girls as well. So illiteracy uh, in terms of the um, uh, foundational skills and other issues is not a big issue. However, it will be an issue if we are teaching, let's say, grade 9 and 10 students, which we are currently doing, because these students, um, you know, their math problem, English problem, parents cannot solve. Uh, and we actually didn't ask parents to solve anything. We just used the parents to help the young children. So now the grade 9, 10 students are able to interact directly with the tutors over the phone. So it's not going to be a really important issue. And we also have uh, you know, uh, a separate session in case of in, in the interactive voice response because this is, uh, they are calling a kind of uh, a system and the system is responding. Uh, but in addition to the system, we are also giving them a, a number of a helper uh, and this help, uh, helper is basically a tutor over the phone uh, and they can get some advice and even they can solve their problems over the phone as well. Thank you uh, very much, Dr. Asad Islam. It's a privilege to have you here and here to your learned presentation and the discussion, which is very much related to our own country scenario where the technological deprivation is leading to both the learning deprivation and differences in the education level. I thank you on behalf of the organizers for uh, your presentation here today. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a privilege to monitor your session. Thank you so much, Dr. Zoe. Uh, look forward to have you in a while again. <laughs>